Okay, let's uh, let's just pray and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for everything that we see around. We thank you for the ability that you've given us to observe, to comprehend, God, to um, to understand, to analyze. Master, we thank you. We, we know that it comes from you, God, because we are created in your image. And Lord, we just want to thank you for, for these abilities that you've uh, put in us, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, even as we pursue this course, Lord, that you will enable us to do that, um, Lord, to to use our faculties of analysis and, and research and thinking. And, and Lord, I pray even as we pursue, God, these uh, topics that you, Lord, um, Lord, you uh, remind us of or you put in our hearts, God, drop in our hearts, God. Uh, I pray that it will be a blessing, not only to us, it will be a I open her to us, God, that, uh, um, Lord, about these things and um, about these various um, Lord, uh, Lord, aspects of your faith or Lord, the needs that are there. Lord, it will be an eye opener to us. And also, I pray that it will be a blessing to, to many who read it. We thank you. We give you this time. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, uh, very quickly, uh, I, I don't know how many of you are joining only today. You're joining um, uh, uh, just today. Maybe you missed last class. But just want to remind us about um, this course. This course uh, research paper. It's uh, it's everything that is done by the students. And uh, you know, as a faculty, I'm just here to facilitate that and maybe fine tune a few things. Um, so for this course, we have certain uh, time frames. Certain, um, it's it's about taking a topic, uh, getting that approved, uh, and doing a, a research on it, and presenting the findings. You know, very simply, that is what this course is about. Um, and so the topic uh, is something that you need to come up with. Um, there is a way in which. The report has to be presented, and that we call it as the MLA uh, uh, MLA format. We're going to be just using that format. Um, the template for that also, I will you know upload it at the right time. So let me just um, go through the timeline again. Um, it's um, yeah, just yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope you can see it coming up on the screen. OK, so it can be a biblical topic. It can be on a doc doctrine. It can be about a social, political, religious issue. It can be any new thought, any idea, a concept that you want to you know, research on, that you want to think about, um, that you want to further pursue. Um, and uh, And then you get your findings, everything has to be having a biblical perspective and on it, you know, in the sense, if it is a problem that you're talking about, it has to have a biblical perspective on it, you know. What does the Word of God say about it? What does the Word of God, uh, you know, talk about it? Is the Word of God silent about it? Are there anything, you know, um, what is the biblical, at least the, you know, the principles and the foundations that address it? Right, so we we mentioned that. Uh, so it has to have a biblical perspective of it. You know, it can't be just okay. Um, you know, the IT industry in the in this century or something like that. You know, uh, which uh, it has to have. You can talk about the IT industry, but it has to have a biblical perspective of it. Right, um, and also um, it uh, again uh, just to remind us that it should not be about any subject. Of the past or present, you know, like you might be, uh, let's say, you have a subject on small groups, life groups, and discipleship and small groups ministry. So it can it can't be material lifted out of that. You know, it can't be material taken out of that. It has to be something original. Um, you can talk about small groups ministry, but it has to be something original and not from the notes or the you know the scope of discussion of the classes that you have at present. Right, or it cannot be something that we have already covered in in the past, like the faith, faith or the prophetic, or you know, on those things. Um, so it has to be something else, right? Um, so I just want to remind us of that. 
so anyway so there is a you know uh, if you can look at the screen uh, there is a one page summary of the research topic okay first of all the topic itself okay what is the topic uh, we can discuss it today you know if you're thinking of some topics i've also put um, a google sheet okay i uploaded a google sheet where you can type in your name and the topic that you're going to be handling okay so so uh, we'll do that so that we can prevent any kind of overlap and even if uh, two topics sound the same we can probably fine tune it and see okay maybe there is a difference between these topics if it's going to be exactly the same then obviously one person has to drop it and whoever's probably put up put that topic up first can pursue it the other person also you know the other person obviously has to um, pursue some other topic right so so we have a time frame so 23rd of january which is next monday is the last date uh, on or before that so by 9 am you uh, decide on the topic and you also submit a one page summary okay so um, so you can submit that the word limit is 300 words or maximum of 500 words so it's a one page summary um so once we um, approve of the topic once we are saying okay this is fine you go ahead with it then you can start the research collecting information reading of articles reading of whatever listening to podcasts watching videos everything connected to the topic um you know looking into the word of god researching you can do all that then we have a uh, in by february 27th which is again a monday um, you can submit a draft of the paper you know a draft of your current status right where the research project is then the final draft of the research paper which is the report itself needs to be presented on the 10th of april okay the research paper uh, has to be presented the report sorry um has to be presented on the 10th of april so a minimum of 25 pages and maximum of 30 pages and the, for the project presentation um, so this is the uh, report and there is also a presentation for online students that is for uh, all of us who are in the class right now um, there will be uh, maybe a 10 minute presentation and i'll give the schedule so in class you present it you can use a powerpoint um, it'll be good if you can use a powerpoint to present it maybe it's a five minute even less than 10 minutes just to go give an overview of what the project is then the report also will be there uh, submitted so you know both will be evaluated and that's how you have the marks uh, 25 percent for the presentation and 75 percent for the uh, for the report itself right okay for the e-learning students like we said you will make a video you will upload it i will tell you you know um, the, the the details of it is also there how you should take the video it's you know to make it landscape not vertical you can go through the details okay so the mla uh, format is also there at the end of the uh, of that uh, guidelines the format is also there certain things are not applicable like the material that you use the paper of course it's it's not a hard copy so paper binding samples etc um, it's not applicable, but the rest of the things is applicable. Okay, so um, so that is uh, just a reiteration of what we uh, shared last class. So what I'd like to uh, know from us is, uh, you know, if you if, if you have uh, uh, fine tuned and if you have uh, finalized on any topic for the uh, for your uh, uh, for the project report for the project. Um, you can, yeah, yeah. So Shri Kumar has a question. Can we write on current affairs? Yeah, so definitely you can. Um, and your topic can reflect that. You can write on current affairs. So, so if you can say what is it, what exactly that you have in mind, um, Shri Kumar, then probably we can fine tune that. Okay, so has anyone uh, finalized on a topic? You could probably even put it on the. Uh, okay, somebody put up their hand. Sorry, I don't see. Did anyone put up your hands or? Um, has anyone finalized the topic? You know, you could. Um, 
you could actually share what is the topic that you based on. Yeah, say, go ahead, please. Um. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Pastor. Uh, so what, what I meditated on upon after the class was I would like to uh, do a research more on the blood of the lamb. On the blood of the lamb, okay, okay. Um, basically, mm -hmm. to see to see the essence and the significance and why, and just um, try to see how to uh, connect the old to the new and mm -hmm. point it back to Jesus Christ and its significance in our lives and um, why the blood was very an important component to the crucifixion of Christ Jesus. So that, that, that's kind of the areas I want to um, delve into. In mm. um, isn't it something that we've already covered, uh, say, and, uh, you know, in the cross of Christ, uh, you already covered that, and also in the covenants and so on. So various subjects would have covered this. So how different would this be, what you're doing? Because we have covered it, uh, you have studied on it. So, how different would your research be? Because it has to be different. If it is going to be the same, then you know it can't be evaluated. So, yeah. So, 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 so I think we delved more in terms of covenants. I know we did treat that. Mm. Oh, I don't know if uh, I don't know if we um, I, I don't know I think I'm, I'm just gonna go a different route uh, okay so what I would suggest is you can you can actually go through the notes you know of what you have already um, study um, I would say that you look at the cross of Christ um, you look at um, you know biblical covenants um, you know and then see if what you really have in mind um, is different from whatever you have studied so far. So you could do okay. that. Yeah. Okay. So we still have time. We still have about uh, one more week to go. So, uh, but uh, yeah, you please do that. And if there's anything, you can also email, right? So I'll check. Um, you can let me know. Or you can just put it on the stream. Any questions? Okay. So, yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Anyone else? So Elisha, Elisha says, uh, doing a impact of prophetic direction in Pentecostal churches and the challenges it presents. Okay, so um, so Elisha, um, it's good the impact of prophetic ministry in Pentecostal churches. Um, so you will have to, you know, when you say Pentecostal churches, so. Like the scope of, I'm just thinking about the scope of the research, right? When you say Pentecostal research, is it, is it Pentecostal search churches of a particular area? If you're looking at, if you're saying globally, then you would have to, you know, provide information, right? So you you see where I'm coming from, uh, because if you say, uh, Pentecost, say Pentecostal search churches in Bangalore, for example, if I say Pentecostal, there are, there are actually lots of churches. Right, so maybe you have to take a sample size of at least twenty-five to thirty churches. You know, it depends again. You know, if there are let's say thousand churches, then the sample size is like uh, ten percent of that. That will be hundred, or even five percent will be fifty. So, in order to give a substantial research, then you'll have to, you know, you'll have to think about that. Yeah, if you if you limit it to let's say you're limit, limiting it to Ghana, and uh, uh, so can you say Kumasi? Is it a name of a town, Elisha? Um, I'm sorry, my geography is kind of sorry. Tell me again. Yes, it's a, it's a name of uh, the city. It's the name of the city. The yeah, city. yeah. So you think about it. You know, in uh, Kumasi. Um, uh, how many Pentecostal churches are there? 
because you're talking about Pentecostal church, which means like you cannot take one or two uh, and then say, okay, this is common for all Pentecostal church. It, it will not be, right? So you think about it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so you think about that, you know, if it's Pentecostal churches, or maybe you can even change it. Um, you know, maybe talk about, you know, it's just my suggestion, you don't have to take it, but, um, you know, how open are, you know, churches of maybe, a, maybe not Pentecostal churches, maybe some other denomination, mainline denomination, how open are they to the prophetic? Uh, you know, something like that also would be, you know, are, how open are they to the work of the Spirit? Uh, you know, are, are they teaching about it? You know, that would also be, a, you know, an eye-opener kind of a research. Um, so, okay, so also think about how will you gauge the impact of the prophetic, right? So you're saying, okay, let's say Pentecostal churches. You now let's go with what you put up, Pentecostal churches. Um, so you're going to be getting some information. Okay, it can't be just assumption. It has to be real information. So to get that, maybe you have to speak to the pastors or the leaders, okay? Or maybe you attend a service and you see, is there anything about the prophetic happening in the service, right? Are there people prophesying? Is there anything happening? Are they, you know, what is the church teaching? Do they have any other, you know, teaching? maybe in small, small groups or during the week. So do, are they teaching about the prophetic? So how uh, how visible is the impact of the prophetic in the church, right? So you will have to uh, maybe teach, I mean, maybe, um, sorry, not teach, maybe find out from the people who are actually attending the church. Uh, so to find that out would be in the form of a questionnaire, in the form of interviews. And you also need to decide, okay, how many people are you going to interview? You know, we can't just interview one person who attends that particular church and come to a conclusion. It has to be a, it has to be a sample size, right? So, so you know, young, old, men, women, so all that. Um, so, yeah. So that is why you know I said, if, if this something like this would be a big, the scope would be really big. A title, a, a research project with this title, the time frame required is more, the information required is more, the research effort required is also, you know, fairly big. So you need to think through that and say, okay, how am I going to get the information? How many people am I going to, you know, with your current schedule, your work, whatever it's, it's yeah, that you're doing with the Bible College, you know, schedule, you see, how can I do this? Can I do this? And if so, you know, how, you just think about, you know, you'd have to interview people, you have to interview leaders, uh, you have to set up, you know, appointments. It can be done, but you think about it and then decide on the scope of it. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think uh, Maxon has put up. Uh, okay, Shrikma, sorry. Yeah, you put your hands up. You, any question? Yeah, just, uh, I'm just thinking to, um... Uh, you know, uh, to uh, do this uh, on casteism and racism. Okay. Uh, it is impacting the image of God and it is impacting how it is impacting the body of Christ also. Okay. Caste um, and race. Caste and racism, because casteism is only in India, but globally the racism is also there. But it is impacting in the church and uh, also it is impacting the image of uh, the image of God, what God has made. But yeah. that is not actually, uh, that is many times, um, that is pulling the people back to experience the freedom, what God has really given to them, because they are born in that, you know, the culture of uh, casteism and, uh, you know, either okay. uh, in racism also. Even the right. leaders also having that. So I just thought that uh, if okay. that is the right topic, I don't know. Yeah, yeah sure. It should, definitely it should be interesting. And, uh, and I guess the scope would be India. And so you can you can find out uh, like uh, I mean you can decide where yes. you want to do, and uh, and uh, like how you're going to get that information. Sure, sir. Yeah, but it is okay, uh, isn't it? Is it is? Yeah, it's absolutely fine. It's fine. So you can talk about the problem. Yes, uh, 
which is prevalent and uh, for that also you know how it impacts uh, christianity how it limits the person from actually you know okay go into all that uh, yes, yes. how limiting it is how uh, you know uh, and then also uh, that's one part of it and yes. your uh, it'll be great if it can uh, involve uh, i mean if it can the research part of it also will be suggestions and how to overcome what the word of god says yes, uh, you know uh, there's neither Jew nor Greek, you know, once you come to Christ, you know, <laughs> of course that will be there, but how to actually practically implement it. Yes. You know, if can, if can there be a, if can there be a, like a pathway, okay, this is what we need to do. Uh, first, the leaders have to change and then yes. it has to come down to everyone in the church. So how do we do it? So uh, a very nice topic, but also you have to think about the, uh, again, you know, I'm Solution. just coming back to that. Yeah, the scope of it. Solution, of course, the scope of it. In a sense, um, are, you, are you going to talk about caste and race in, let's say, a place like Bellari, uh, or a place like, uh, you know, whatever place you're choosing, how are you going to get that information? So is it needed that I should um, choose a particular place or uh, is it I can uh, I can or oh, I can look over whole country like is it, is it possible? Yeah, you can you can take, a, you know, a, a big chunk uh, like a nation, but then your information gathering uh, because it's a research. So yes. it has to have some hard, you know, numbers and facts. Okay. So um, like uh, quantifying it and qualifying it. No? So you have to look at uh, some kind of, uh, if, if there's information available, uh, you know, this kind of race and caste in church. I don't know if anybody's done a research on that um, <laughs> because it will involve a lot of work. If you're taking nation, you know, you think about it, you're talking about different uh, states and you're thinking about, and within the state, you're talking about different churches and rural urban different denominations so your uh, it'll be good if you can fine-tune and we will be looking at jan feb march april you know we are done by <laughs> april so yeah so you need to look at okay something that is that you can finish within this of course you can change you, the topic also later before 23 yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's a great topic but you, actually if you limit it to uh you know this the scope if you can fine tune it oh, and sure. something that can be done in four months uh then it will be great sure sir yeah okay Thank you, sir. okay Thank you. yeah uh then maxon says false prophet so maxon uh could you just explain please uh false prophets what aspect of it because uh you know some of it is was already you've already handled this in understanding the prophetic uh about prophecy um and false prophecy so uh false prophets and so on so it needs to be something very different from that so when you say false prophets um what exactly do you have in mind is maxon still on in the class uh, Okay, he's not there. Maxon Sakara. Okay, he's not there. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, and who else? Okay, Prabhakar, you said uh, perseverance in prevailing Christian persecution and religious fanaticism. Okay. Yeah, so I guess you. Uh, so, where are you going to? Persecution where, uh, Prabhakar? Religious fanatism where? Have you uh, thought of that? Yes, Pastor. I, I was thinking about it. Basically, it is uh, prevailing uh, over the centuries, but uh, uh, I will particularly locating uh, in, in our country, India, uh, specifically in India, during like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the period of uh, like 20th century and 21st century. I'll yeah. do the comparative analysis and how the prophecies has been fulfilled through the verses. And uh, now it has become more, you know, uh, more prevailing day by day. It is becoming more uh, fervent because of the religious fanatism. So, uh, yeah, so I want to, you know, point out those things and I want to do the research on that. 
Sure. So that so you're talking about India. So again, just think about um, um, where you from where you will get the information. Uh, of course, there are a lot of um, sources, um, Christian sources, and also secular, which talk about uh, Christian persecution. So your what is your objective? Um, how to persevere? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Actually, actually, most of the people are getting disheartened uh, mm. during kind during the tenure of persecution but it has al already written in the bible that we are going to be persecuted mm -hmm. some of my get killed or caught or you know so how to you know, you know cope up with that uh, uh, persecution with the perseverance mm -hmm. god has given us and i'll show the facts and figures and the findings as well as uh, how many people were like uh, affected truly and how they stood uh, mm -hmm. for the trial so that is the my main motto so to encourage people during amidst persecution so that we can stand together more uh, effectively through the strength of god so that we can face it because it has already to told in the bible yeah yeah i think it's a great topic um so you can actually give a biblical basis for persecution um and the scriptural understanding of it and uh, and also when you're looking into persecution maybe you're talking about the nation so maybe you can you can maybe fine tune it to the highly persecuted states like what are the different kinds of persecution you know uh, one is of course uh, outright violence and uh, uh, you can you can you know so the scope of uh, I mean, not the scope so different categories of persecution if you want to call it that you know uh it, it could be straight away you know violence and uh, uh people killing one another in the name of uh, all this um or it can i mean and also it can be like things like um okay you're from a christian faith so we won't rent the house out to you you know you can't use the village well because uh or the, you can't use the water pump here you can't you have to go further away because this is only for this community you know uh, it can be that so it'll be great if you can actually give a a, a window into what are the kinds of persecution you know because normally we just think okay people being uh you know uh, places of worship you know houses of worship being burnt down or but it could be also very very subtle maybe in a you know in an office that you're being overlooked for promotion or whatever you know so if if it can be i'm just just a suggestion you know, so it can actually uh you can give a per, you know how you're persecuted it can range from this to this you can talk about that and also yeah if there are stories of how people faced it uh how people endured how people overcame that will be great and also if can there be transformation stories uh, like how the per persecutor like just like Saul you know how the persecutor um changed you know that that can also be that will also be a great um I would say encouragement to the church in terms of enduring persecution um and you know how and of course the response you know praying for the for those who are persecuting us and that will be the response of the church of course uh, so you can list that out so it'll be good yeah so again you think about the scope uh Prabhaka. like uh, are you going to take one state are you going to talk about because uh, you need to give some information um and uh, it'll depend on that your topic will actually drive the whole thing you know what kind of information you're presenting and researching so yes pastor actually yeah. i'll try to you know imbibe as a whole country as i mentioned pastor but, mm. uh it might be limit if i limit it to a particular city or particular state i mean mm. i might miss other other states as well because sure, sure. it has many no certain types of categories as you said pastor so uh, i'll try to you know uh, gather all the types of uh, um, this persecution and put it together hopefully i'll and put it together oh, my god sure sure Okay, so Asha asks um, uh, if I can do a topic called the unquenchable living water. Okay, could you just describe Asha, like what exactly you have in mind? Mm -hmm. 
Asha is on the call, right? Asha, I can see Asha Rani. So, what exactly do you have in mind? The unquenchable living water. Um, obviously, the Lord says, okay. Um, I'm thinking of two things, right? John chapter four and also John chapter seven, where the Lord says, okay, I will the water that I give, they will never thirst again, and then also. You know, the water that I give from which rivers will flow is yes, we understand that. But what is your four months of research going to be on? Okay, you, you think and let me know. Hmm? We can talk more on this. Uh, it's fine, but you're going to be spending four months. So what exactly do you have in mind what all do you want to cover in that yeah okay is there anyone else uh, you've thought of a topic and you want to just you know discuss it so we can kind of provide more clarity yeah yeah, yeah. maxon is also back and uh, mangi also and okay, we'll start with Maxon, Mangi, and then Chris. Yeah, um, Maxon, could you? And then Prabhakar. Prabhaka. Yeah, yeah Ma of course. I've got network problem. I'm on off, on off, but uh, oh, okay. I'm still joining. Oh, sorry to hear that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm thinking to my mm -hmm. my one should be false prophet. And I yeah. want to look mostly on why people they choose to be false prophets. Mm -hmm. On that also I will see I will also research about it. those false prophets. Do they know that they are false prophets? I want also to look on why people they flock to them mm -hmm. and the consequences that comes if people flock to them. This is mm -hmm. Some of them, what I want to research about. Yeah. So, um, so who are these prophets or ministries that you want to study about, and where are they located? Yeah, these false prophet, like people who start their ministry or church. Yeah, I got that. But I understood that. So, are they in a particular uh, country? Like how many of them? How many of them do you have in mind? No, I'm not limited to one country. Just mm. in general. Yeah. So the thing is, um, you need to know. I mean, it's um, it's like a fact finding or you know, uh, fault fault finding mission. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, so I mean, it's good and bad in the sense. You know, when you look into it, you can become very negative and say, what is yeah. happening? You know, that can happen to you personally, right? Um, but I think it, it will be interesting as well if you do it, you know, being anchored in the word, saying, okay, God, you know, this is, this is what is happening, but we know that you are bigger than this and you know that this is, um, yeah, people can overcome and people can be restored. So, yeah, so, uh, so you... If you, 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 because the thing is, you, you, you would have to really go deeper um, into the teachings, into the ministry, into the lives of people who are part of that ministry, uh, all that. So you think about it, because it should not come from assumption. It's a research, yes. right? So you are maybe watching a video, maybe you are. You know, the thing is also not to be biased, right? Because we can have some personal biases, and uh, we we need to have a full picture. So it's a little, it's a little bit. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a little sensitive thing. You think about it, uh, Maxon. If you really want to do this topic, and if you want to do it well, of course, it's cautioning the church, etc. But uh, also, it's like a fault-finding mission. <laughs> you know, you're looking into the <laughs> lives of people. Yeah, you're just seeing what are the faults they have. 
you see if yeah. you if you want if you have something else in mind you think about it but if this is what you need to do yeah. then it's fine i mean it's absolutely okay but uh, but i'm just telling you the reality of it you know this is yeah. this is what it will involve so you're going to be spending time doing that so think about it there's time to change okay. so you can you know you can take it off the list for now and okay. once you decide you can put it okay so mangi uh, yeah please thank you pastor yeah. um but the topic i'm thinking of writing on is uh the church of the future and mm -hmm. it relevant relevant uh relevance in 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 the world we live in it's based on the the, the past churches where the church had influence and most establishment were established by the church things like universities hospitals and schools and mm -hmm. how will that look like in 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 the near future in the next 50 years mm -hmm. okay so that's it so you're going to look at the past and you're going to present some information about the church of the past and how they birthed um i mean influenced art and you know education and all these and you're going to look at uh, will you also look at the present yes, scenario so the present, what we are what the church is doing globally and then mm. the future mm. okay okay nice um yeah but try to cover as many i mean geographical location as possible um yeah i think that will you know as many continents as possible that will help give a you know hold some picture um yeah i i'm sure when you look at the you know in the church of the past we look at uh, okay church in asia church in maybe church in the west which really influenced uh you know art and architecture and um education government right so that's what stands out for us probably there's there's more uh in other cultures and other continents as well so you could research that yeah and also search of the future is what you are like presenting this is what we could be um also try and get into some details of how the church can do that you know uh, what the church should do present day church to, should do in order to get there um maybe in order to be restored to you know the place of influence that it had earlier so yeah you could do that we could we can talk more yeah um that's good so i'll, I'll just quickly uh, thanks uh, mangi uh, so i'll just quickly uh, address kennedy kennedy how to handle physical and spiritual burnout in church leaders uh, great topic um, so obviously uh, are you going to um, give us some uh, real life examples of burnout that happened uh, and study that and and you know that would ob that would give um, uh, some clarity this is how this is why burnout happened so you're going to do that i guess right um yeah we can't hear you so i mean it's fine yeah physical and spiritual burnout uh but then again you know it will be great if there's some research done on on real examples real churches real people and uh, you know if there's some biography you know uh, books about them maybe some autobiography some people testifying and saying this is what happened this is how i lived and this is how so and it can be it, it it's good if it's if it can be a wide spectrum like of uh, my suggestions you know maybe church maybe itinerant ministry maybe small group kind of a thing so you know that okay irrespective of what you know a level of ministry or what scope of ministry you know this physical and spiritual burnout is something real that we should watch out for right it doesn't mean that uh, you know if you're just leading a home church that you will not be spiritually burnt out you know, and physically burnt out you can be right so it's not just the mega church pastors but it's also so if you can you know 
kind of have that whole spectrum of whoever is in, in ministry, whatever form of ministry, um, then it'll be great. So if you can find information on various, you know, that'll help. That'll add some more, you know, meat to the whole uh, uh, research, right? Okay, then we have uh, Prabhakar and Chris and then Abhishek. Yeah, Prabhakar, go ahead, please. Uh, good evening, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Pastor, like I was thinking uh, on some controversial topic, like mm -hmm. really very sensitive. Uh, uh, I was thinking on should church include uh, teaching on physical relationship on partners? Uh, mm -hmm. For example, Pastor, like, uh, like kids or youth are partners in church, especially, uh, they, they have to learn through media or somebody, some, something that is, uh, you know, they may uh, get exposed to a few other things also. Um, because I've seen uh, um, little issues happening with my friends and all that. Um, because uh, they, they, they don't have anyone to go and approach. Uh, so, okay. But I really don't know how to start up this, or should I take this? Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's so fine. It's that fine. maybe you can talk about. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But you just uh, define and also focus. What is it that you want to see? You can start from you know gender identity to physical relationships to I mean in the sense of sexuality, and uh, you know uh, so all that, and then marriage and you know God's plan for mar marriage and family and all those uh, you know the thing. So and how. Uh, so you can probably even look at uh, you know churches and what they've been teaching, uh, and you yeah. can look at a few churches and then come to the conclusion that yeah, I mean you can talk about the problem. This is a problem in society. It is a problem among Christians, among believers, and uh, is it because of lack of teaching or is it black? Is it because of you know something else? Lack of implementation. You know we have the knowledge, but then there's nothing to empower the believer to live that. Because you just set the standard and then say, okay, yes, yes. do it. But then there's nothing to, you know, uh, empower the believer to do that. So, um, uh, so that, and also, and you can also give some, you know, come some, some success stories or some, some yeah. things that maybe I was thinking I can people are doing some refer books which you can refer biblical books. Um, mm. uh, because I have a long back, I have heard one of my friends who's a believer telling in their church uh, they educate uh, youth. Uh, yeah. So in that way, they can they don't have to go to outside people or to right. media to learn things. Here they can sure. uh, be in a protected way, not to yeah. uh, give them any loop loopholes or foothold to the devil. I think. Yeah, yeah. So you know, church should address that. So. So you can, yeah, you can do that, uh, Prabhaka. Sure. But you, uh, the topic has to be, you know, framed in such a way and the direction of your research also in such a way that it's, you know, the, the focus is right you know, um, so yeah. that you can do a substantial work on it um, yes. in the findings, etc. So, yeah. I'm, I'm really challenged and I'm, I'm nervous to do I think it's a good topic, good uh, <laughs> thing. Yeah, good to do. Yeah, see, the church, see the churches, some of the churches are doing it. Like, uh, but then, okay, uh, what else needs to be done? If churches are not doing it, okay, they can do it. But then if churches are already doing it, okay, what else? So I think that's fine. You can you can definitely do it. Yeah. Okay, so now I'll, I'll ask Chris. I think we have a few, a few minutes. So, Chris, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah. Thank you, um, Chris, uh, you can go ahead. Is Chris still on call? Uh, class. Yeah, yeah, I can hear Chris. Can you Please me yeah. Okay. Yeah, so my topic actually around, uh, uh, you know, the uh, consumption of, of alcohol mm. uh, in the life of a believer okay. and, uh, you know, the prevalence of it, uh, you know, the impact of it, the, um, uh, you know, the biblical uh, 
uh, references to it and uh, you know how it is being interpreted mm. um how um, how it um, impacts lives how it impacts the uh, the uh, you know you know different aspects of uh, you know the life of the believer you know from a spiritual sense from you know physical uh, psychological etc social relationship um and um, uh, you know how um, um, uh, so the problems the uh, you know the the implications of it and uh, the prevalence of it as well as uh, um i mean i personally can uh, i mean i don't drink anymore but i used to drink and uh, you know um you know i can also uh, you know reference to you know my own personal that testimony also personal about, testimony. Uh, yeah 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 so the, yeah so that's basically the topic that i want to um, that i would like to uh, do the research on sure sure so you uh, were the topic uh, the title uh, you know very succinctly uh, Chris, so that it's you know very it describes exactly what you are you know setting out to uh, present, right? Um, right. Sure. Yeah, that's good. Um, then we have Abhishek. Abhishek, you. Uh, yes, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I want to uh, this topic about the voice of God. How to hear voice of God? How to practically hear the voice of God? And different mm -hmm. time in the church history, uh, so so I want to share. Is it good? Yeah, definitely it's a good topic, but it's something that you have studied and you know uh, you've learned in college. Like even in understanding the prophetic, I think we mm -hmm. have um, studied that, and also you know. Receiving God's guidance. I think this is the first semester. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not sure uh, where we go into some details of how God speaks and how to receive. Uh, and definitely in the Holy Spirit class, also, you know, we talk about that your spiritual faculties of hearing, um, listening. I mean, here yeah, hearing and seeing, and you know, we see. Look at that. So, how different will this be? from what, have, what you've already studied, uh, Abhishek. OK. Uh, OK, then I will change the subject then, topic. OK, you see, I mean, if it's, if it's something very, very, very different um, and the substantial research, I mean, time can be allotted to it, then, it, then you pursue that, you go ahead. But if you feel that, OK, it's already been addressed uh, to a large extent, then you can look at something fresh, something new. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Master. Awesome. Okay, so I think that's all we have time for. Um, and so, you know, uh, so next, see, um, you're you're free to you know email, and I can just clarify. Uh, you know, my email ID. I'll just put it on the stream, and I'll I'll just make sure that I check it every day, <laughs> um, so that by Monday, you know, you can present uh, so whatever you discuss you know like chris said okay this is what i'd like to do and then you know some of you like prabhaka said okay this is the topic so you just put it in a in a one page summary this is the scope of the you know topic this is the scope of the research and this is what i'd like to do okay you you present it i mean you submit that um and uh, this is by monday okay so you start work on it okay shrikmar you have a uh, thank you sir uh, sir, uh, summary should be uh, in how many words? It's just a one page, and we've said 300 words, but just one page. 300 words means uh, is the whole research should be in 300 days? No, 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 just the, uh, I think, uh, yeah, let me just uh, clarify oh, that, sir. yeah. No, okay. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just a minimum of 300 words uh, ah, okay. for okay. that draft, yeah. I think one page would be around that, so. Okay, sir, thank yeah, you. Fine, yeah. Thank okay. You. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll, we'll, finish, we'll stop here. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye bye.